Hello again, and welcome to today's edition of Tuesday Morning News. So many of you have been asking, where is the PowerPoint for professional development? Well, um, last week we were at the state meeting and there were a few things that changed. So I just wanted to make sure I was giving you the most updated information before reviewing the PowerPoint with you. So I have attached this PowerPoint to um, your help desk folder. So the PowerPoint is there, but I want to review it with you very um, briefly so that you understand what you need to talk to your staff about. And this training is for all staff development. You can train your bus drivers, your cafeteria workers, um, your administrative staff, all your teachers, custodians, anybody that's in your building. Um, this is a training that they need to have because it's all of our responsibilities to build parent capacity. So here it goes. Title I Part A is a federally funded program under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. It is designed to support state and local school reform efforts tied to challenging state academic standards in order to reinforce and amplify efforts to improve teaching and learning for students furthest from meeting state standards. And this is very important. This word furthest from meeting state standards, all of our schools are all Title I except for one school that we have, Pine Mountain, that's coming on as TA. So when, I, when we say furthest from meeting the standards, we're talking about your most at-risk students. So think about which classes are really, really hard for your students. Is it English? Is it science? Is it social studies? Is it math? Um, or what age groups are really having a hard time? Is third grade the hardest in your school? Um, is algebra the hardest um, content area in high school? Or maybe geometry, um, literature across the content area? So we have to work with our parents to make sure whatever we build for them helps them with the things that their students are struggling at at their schools. Because not all schools are struggling at the same things and not all students are struggling at the same things. So even though everyone is Title I, we really want to ensure that um, we're talking about the most at-risk students in our building. All right, so here we go. The Georgia Department of Education provides the parent engagement program to assist and ensure that the Title I Part A parent involvement regulations are met with meaningful and strategic actions to what we're doing here today, build parent capacity and share and support high student achievement because all, it's all of our responsibilities to help with the students. So a quick overview of what we do here at the district. The district is called the LEA. At the district level, we have two meetings. Uh, we have a CLIP meeting that will be held March the 1st of 2016 and June 21st of 2016. We held these last year around the same times. During this meeting time, it is the district's opportunity to um, write the district parent involvement policy. And it's important that your staff know that, that the district writes the parent policy, yours mimics or models the parent involvement policy, and we have to monitor all 46 campuses. Um, ours has to have the same thing that yours does. It has to have a revision date. It has to be jointly developed. It has to have parent in input. It has to be distributed in easy language. It's on our website. It's um, folded in beautiful copies. Um, all of that good stuff. So um, we have to do the same thing here, so I just want to let you guys know that, and it has to be evaluated annually. During this CLIP meeting, we invite all of the, um, the, the federally funded programs. So there is student special services or special education. There is all the professional development and the learning communities, the people that decide what curriculum Cobb County is going to use. There is English language learners. There is funding. Every single person. There is CTAE, which is the career technology component, um, guidance counselors. Everyone is invited to this meeting so that parents can understand all of the components that uh, their students and opportunities that their students have. So that is what this meeting is about. And of course, you are invited uh, during those meetings. The, March meeting will probably be the 6 p.m. meeting, and the June meeting will probably be the 9 a.m. meeting. It will either be held here at the Title I office at Rose Garden or the Safety Village. So take your time and read over that so that you can understand um, a little bit more about that. And all of our purposes are the same. We have to provide academic assistance for the most at-risk students. So those are the students or the classes or the subjects that students are not meeting standards in. We have to provide them materials and training. We have to provide professional development for both our staff and our parents. 
we work to transition our students. So that's from pre-K to kindergarten, from fifth to sixth grade, and from eighth to ninth grade. Everything goes home in family-friendly language and we have reasonable support. So reasonable support can be your PTA, it can be different clubs that you have at your schools, it can be webinars like these. It just depends on what you wanna do at your school. All right, so when we get down to the school level, what do you have to do? You have to provide your school policy. Your policy is due October 30th. You already had your two parent meetings. So you had your input meeting back in April. And at your input meeting, you gave your parents the opportunity to look over your policy and compact. So this meeting that you're gonna have now for professional development for your staff, you're gonna actually have your staff look at the parent policy and the compact to make sure they don't have anything else they need to add because it has to be jointly developed. So you've gotten parent input, now it's time to get some teacher input. Um, you have to have a revision date. Your policy probably says sometime in 2014 because that's when you would have done it last school year. So you just need to update it to whatever day you finish. If you finish this on September 1st, you can um, say updated September 1st. Well, actually, we like to say revision date September 1st or October 30th, whenever. It just has to be done by October 30th, and this goes in the October 30th folder. The policy, like everything else, it has to be it has to go home in multiple ways. So that means backpacks. It needs to be printed and put in the front office or in your parent resource room. It needs to be available on your website. And a lot of the schools, I cannot find your parent involvement website. So please talk with your administrator, your academic coach, your media specialist, someone that um, parent involvement needs to be linked very easily on your page. So it needs to be um, a, on that website. It needs to be on the front page um, of that website or really easy to find. Some people have to go through three or four different places to find those documents and they really need to be visible um, for the state. All right, so read about your parent involvement policy. We have to have parent input. These meetings um, for your parent involvement, just so you'll have some background knowledge, they can be in all kinds of ways. So a lot of people would like to use webinars. And if you'd like to use Blackboard Connect or GoToMeeting or something like that, then just use the form and let me know. We can provide transportation and childcare for these meetings. That's something that comes out of your local school Title I budget. Meetings can be held at other places other than your schools. So you can hold a meeting at a church, you can hold a meeting at a complex. A lot of schools actually have their meetings um, at their local apartments or um, their communities that are close by. And it can be in a variety of formats. So that's face-to-face, one-on-one, in small groups, um, whatever works for your school. Read about the policy. You have to have your annual meeting, your school parent compact, and you have to build capacity. So you're building capacity now by helping your teachers and educators understand what they have to do and what your requirements are. So now on to your annual meeting. I want to talk about the two annual meetings because some people really do get them uh, confused. Today is just a face-to-face, -face, this part of the year. So the fall meeting is simply a face-to-face -face meeting that has to be held sometime in the beginning of the year, but before October 30th. In this meeting, you're not gonna ask for any parent input. You're just gonna go over the policy with them and you're gonna go over the compact with them to let you know these are the things that your school is doing. This is how you're gonna communicate with your school. So you need to show them where the website is, how to get forms off of there, and where to go. So if your teachers are using Remind, this is an opportunity for you to make sure that Remind is in your compact and that you tell the teachers, hey, our teachers are going to use Remind, or our teachers are going to use blogs, or we have this parent resource room here with these items in it. This is what the purpose of this meeting is. The second meeting is the annual input meeting. That input meeting ha is a spring meeting, and it can only happen between April the 1st and April the 30th. So it's a very tight window because you want input after parents have used your compact and policy all year, then you need to ask them, hey, what do we need to do differently for next year? So we're not going to really talk about that, but I do want to talk about the difference. So the meeting that you have to have now before October the 30th, explain Title I, describe Title I requirements and inform parents as to how they can be involved. That should be in your compact. 
inform parents of their right to be involved in the parent improvement plan, explain the school's designation status, and the Title I program. You already sent out the school's designation letter. So all of schools are all school-wide schools. If you are Pine Mountain, you are a TA school. If you are a focus or priority school, we only have three focus and one priority schools. They already know who they are. So you, this is an opportunity for you to just talk a little bit about what that means with your parents. The annual Title I meeting is to inform, not to gather input. It cannot be combined with any other meeting. So you'll say, Natalie, can I have this on our PTA night? Sure, but it has to be separate. So if PTA starts at seven, this meeting can start at six. It has to be one hour long. It has to have a separate flyer. It has to be um, advertised on your website. It has to be advertised on your kiosk. You have to do a call out to parents. It has to be advertised in multiple ways. Um, and when I say multiple, that means two or more. So um, that's what the state asks us to do. So multiple is two or more um, ways. And it has to be standalone. So flyers, sign-in sheets, agendas, everything that you do has to be actually separate from whatever other meeting you're going to have. So it needs, must be a full hour and have separate everything. All right. So on to your compact. Once again, you already had input on your compact. So this is just an opportunity for your staff right now to look at the compact, see if they want to change anything. Because maybe they're not using Remind anymore. Or maybe they are going to update blogs monthly or weekly. Or they have Edmodo or some other way that they communicate with parents. You just want to make sure that that's in there. And I'll give you an example. If your school, if the school said uh, teachers are going to update their blogs weekly, then that would be bullet number one under the teachers will do. Under the parents will do, it says that parents will check the blogs. And then under the student will do, it says I will complete the blogs or check the blogs also or complete the assignments on the blog. So each bullet needs to be the same. So number one under parents, students, and teachers all has to be the num same. Number two would all have to be the same. And I only think that you should have maybe three or four points under each because you don't want to overwhelm your parents. You just want this to be a tool that the parents can actually use. So too much information is sometimes too much information. So here's more about your compacts. You've already designed these, so you don't need to really edit them. Take time to read over that. And the whole purpose of this professional development that you're going to give to your um, staff members is to build that capacity. How is it sustainable? What are the schools doing every day? We have our Engage One campaign, which is going to be very exciting. Um, all the teams will meet sometime in September. I'm waiting on the approval for our meeting date. When we meet in September, this will be an opportunity for us to get together as our teams and decide how we want to that Engage One to look. Um, the Engage One is really going to be um, your project, so I'm excited about that. Um, and if you want to purchase, if you want to have the um, do the student surveys, I'll go ahead and. Um, post that in the next week or so so you can do the student surveys and begin to gather ideas about how to make those bags so when you show the video um, you'll have that information because this professional development is just one of the professional developments that you'll do this is your main requirement but we ask that the parent facilitators work with the, the school coaches in order to ensure that the that the parent facilitators know all of those things that are influencing the most at-risk students so that when they're talking to parents every day, they understand how to articulate exactly um, what's needed. So uh, make sure you take a moment to read over this. Um, the Georgia State Standards, this has not been updated. It is no longer the GPS or CCGPS. Now it is the Georgia Standards of Excellence. Once again, Georgia Standards of Excellence. Um, that's not that big of a deal. And of course, we don't have CRTT anymore, but they did not update this. So take some time to read over the building capacity um, requirements. And this is really what you are going to present um, to your schools. If you have more questions, um, let me know. But the, this is just a pretty simple uh, PowerPoint for you to review. I'm going to get down to the end. Uh, this is the, the parent notification letters that everyone's going to send out. You've already sent these out. Don't worry about the flexible learning programs unless you have that information. Um, high quality teachers. So these are just some things that we send out. And as a reminder, the annual parent meeting, the district parent involvement policy, 
the School Parent and Policy and Compact, Target Assistance School is Pine Mountain, Flexible Learning Programs, no one has that except for the three focus and the one priority school, and to make sure that you invite all of your parents to the CLIP meeting and that we assess annually and that annual assessment.